Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a really splendid CD of Haydn Quartets by the Takash Quartet on Hyperion, and it's very well filled. You get the Quartet in D minor, Opus 42, you get the two Opus 77 quartets, and you get the incomplete quartet Opus 103, the last couple of quartet movements, in fact, the last major movements of anything that Haydn wrote. So it's really great to have these all together. It's like all of the, the um, singleton and small group quartets, because most of Haydn's quartets, as some of you may know, were published in groups of three or six. I mean, aside from the early Quartet Divertimenti, the really earliest pieces before the classical string quartet got established, when those were written individually too, at least we think most of them were, although they were grouped later. Um, Haydn's string quartets begin with Opus 9, and they work their way up chronologically. There's Opus 9, Opus 17, Opus 20, Opus 33, Opus 42, Opus 50, Opus 54, 55, which was one group divided in half, and then Opus 64, and then Opus, uh, what is it, 70-something, 70-something, 71, 72, or 72, 73, or 73, 74, one or something like that, and then Opus 76, and then Opus 77, which has only two, and then the last two bits. So there you go, 68 quartets, more or less. And, and this is just marvelous. I mean, Hyperion now has the Takash Quartet since Decca has decided that chamber music um, is, is unworthy of serious consideration, but it's our, it's our luck because they're just great. I wish they'd do a whole cycle. Oh, I wish they'd do a cycle. I mean, they've done some already for Decca, but uh, for Hyperion, that would just be lovely, wouldn't it? But, you know, it really is kind of amazing to me. We live in a time when, when, I, we're, Haydn quartet playing is in bad shape. Quartet playing is in fabulous shape, but Haydn quartet playing isn't. And the reason is because of the freaking period instrument people. And I know you're going to say, ah, there he goes again. He hates period instruments. Bloop, 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 bloop. I don't. I've praised many period instrument performances of Haydn quartets. I love the mosaic. I love the festetics. I love all kinds of period instrument groups. What I hate is hideous, ugly quartet playing. And it seems that, including quartets on Hyperion, like the new Haydn London Quartet, the new London Haydn Quartet, whatever they were called, they just uglify the sound and poke and prod at the music. And, and they're just so freaking unmusical and tasteless. It's just terrible. And all in the name, of course, of authenticity or doing something different or whatever, whatever bullshit, you know, theory they're, they're pushing this week. There's just a lot of them. And they just sound dreadful. I mean, there was the Doric Quartet doing some stuff on Shadows. They just, they're just bad, really bad. So it's all the more delightful that a really terrific Haydn disc comes along. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about the quartets a little bit, and we can talk about the performances. Opus 42 is a single quartet. No one knows why he wrote it. It's only, in this performance, what, 13 minutes long? It's tiny. In four movements, it's a miniature quartet. Haydn must have written it for some specific purpose. But it's very interesting because it begins with a, a movement marked Andante ed Innocentamente, innocently. And it is, it's a very sweet move, quartet that only very gradually shows some more complexity, particularly in the finale, where it gets quite contrapuntal and where these people take it an absolutely dazzling presto. It's just exciting as hell. But it's interesting because it begins in a minor key and it ends in a minor key, which is really unusual for Haydn. Incredibly unusual for Haydn. It ends quietly in a minor key. It's very, very strange. Interesting, quirky little piece. And it's just delightful. It's wonderfully performed here. Now, the Opus 77 quartets are uh, some of Haydn's greatest instrumental music of any kind. I mean, they are the last major quartets he wrote around 1799. He was supposed to write six. He got interrupted during the seasons, the composition of which he claims killed him, and the late masses as well. And by the time he came back to doing the quartets, the set of six, um, he couldn't finish. He could only write two isolated movements. He was suffering, we think, from something like arteriosclerosis, and his, his, his mental faculties were starting to go, and he knew it. And, and he wasn't going to write bad music, 
um, and he couldn't continue to complete his last quartet. So we only have these last two. But the fact is that everything that Haydn completed shows him at the height of his powers. There's no diminution as he gets older and feebler. He just stopped when he knew he couldn't do it. He was about 72 um, at that point, which isn't terribly old, but in those days it was old and, and people's health was, you know, iffy at best. And he lived for another another bunch of years until what, 1809 or something like that? Yes, 1809. From 1804 is when he stopped writing these quartets to 1809, another five years. Um, the age of 77, yeah. That's as far as he made it. Now, the Opus 77 quartets are glorious, absolutely glorious. And these performances are really lively and, and full of vigor. The opening of Opus 77, number one, it's a march. It's chum, 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 ba da dum, bum, bum, ya da dum, ba da dum, ba da dum, boo doo doo. It's so catchy, and it really has a a swing, a, a, a live, lively, lively step forward in this sort of performance. And the scherzo, wow, baby, the scherzo is a hot thing. It's got this really cool kind of Hungarian trio that's actually faster than the outer movements of the scherzo, and they really dig into it. The slow movement is, is one of Haydn's, it, it, it's incredibly formally regular, but it sounds completely free. It's one of those things, it's just, it's a, a, a series of quasi variations. It sounds like variations, but it's not. It's in sonata form, but you'd never know it. On a very simple phrase that's just repeated with endless harmonic imagination. It's really marvelous. Oh, it's just wonderful. And then we have um, Opus 77, number two, which is equally splendidly wonderful. Um, you know, the, the, the second movement, particularly the, the second movement in this case is a scherzo. And it's one of those really rhythmically tricky thing that's wonderful. It is followed by this marvelous andante that's in sort of variation form. It's, it's, Haydn at this point was, was really just free. You know, it's ironic because, you know, we, we say that Haydn was the guy who like invented all the forms of classical music and he did, but he didn't obey the rules that he supposedly invented. He didn't even know they existed. He just wrote music. And in these late quartets, we see him actually starting to get beyond the strictures of what, you know, your sort of average sonata thing is supposed to do. I mean, there's still, there's the style is still there. The style is still there, but the formal outlines have become, have become completely individual to each work. You know, the arrangement of movements and what he does within them, it's extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary stuff. And the most interesting thing I think about Opus 77 is that they were commissioned by Beethoven um, and designed to be published by the same guy, the same publisher, who was going to, uh, who was, had just published Beethoven's Opus 18 quartets. And Haydn was a very interesting guy because, you know, when people asked him to write operas, he said, no, ask Mozart. He does it better than I do. <laughs> he said, my operas are for a specific place. They wouldn't work. You should have something. Go, go, ask Mozart. You know, he, he didn't trespass on the work of others if he thought that they would be able to do it better than he did. So Beethoven's Opus 18 string quartets sort of were out there or getting written, and Beethoven, of course, was his student. And Haydn did not stop writing quartets. He didn't stop writing quartets after he heard Mozart's quartets dedicated to himself because he knew there were some things that he just owned, and the string quartet was one of those things. And you can really hear it here in these wonderfully musical and vibrant performances by the Takash Quartet on Hyperion. And thank God there's still some good Haydn playing out there. I mean, the string quartet, the modern string quartet is one of the glories of Western civilization. And the, 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 the polish and technique that they can bring to this music. And, you know, we're, we're at a level that we've never seen before. So why don't they do it? Well, some still do. And you can hear it right here. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.